Hey, do you even mind, bro? Bro, what the flux are you doing? How are you gonna clean all that off? Eh, I don't think so. I think you need an ultrasonic cleaner, that's what I think. What's up, everybody? It's Dan from Pizza Handhelds, and today we're gonna talk about using ultrasonic cleaning for your Game Boy parts. And before we get started, we're gonna do a brief overview on how ultrasonic cleaning works. Ultrasonic cleaning is a process that uses high frequency sound waves to remove dust, debris, and little particles on the surface of the object submerged. It works as the transducer emits energy waves through the cleaning detergent or distilled water. The rapid waves produce these micro bubbles and as the micro bubbles hit the surface of the object that you submerged in the cleaning solution, it's gonna knock loose and remove debris, dust, and other things in those hard to reach places. Typical detergents used in an ultrasonic cleaner include distilled water, simple green, and specialized PCB cleaning solution. Ultrasonic cleaning can be used effectively in hard plastics such as ABS, which is known for its high strength and durability. It is known that there are limitations to using ultrasonic cleaning with ABS plastic. I have not found any serious degradation side effects of using ultrasonic cleaning on PCB and Game Boy shells. And this is a disclaimer, if you use ultrasonic cleaning on your ABS Game Boy shells, that you may experience cracking and other wear and tear on your Game Boy shell. I chose to purchase a Vigor 3 liter ultrasonic cleaner as it'll fit all Game Boy shells and PCBs easily where they can lay flat in the basket. This cleaner was $80 off of Amazon. There are smaller, cheaper versions of this ultrasonic cleaner where you run into maybe not having enough room to submerge your parts into the solution. However, there is a trade-off where more volume will require you to use more cleaning solution to fill that space. This is not a big deal when using conventional detergents such as Simple Green, but it's more an issue when you use PCB cleaning detergents as they can be more expensive. There also is a Harbor Freight ultrasonic cleaner, but the cost savings is minimal, so I went with the more well-known brand. This cleaner can only produce an energy wave frequency of 40 hertz which is appropriate for most applications. On this ultrasonic cleaner and most other common ultrasonic cleaners, the level of the cleaning solution needs to be at least three-fourths full and able to operate. Always read your detergent documentation as it'll specify how diluted you need to have it. In this case, we're using Simple Green, and on the back label, it specifies to use a 10 to 1 ratio when you're putting detergent in the cleaner. When determining what temperature you want your cleaning solution, again, refer to the back label of your detergent, and it'll specify what you want. In this case, with Simple Green, it specifies that you don't want to go above 105 degrees Fahrenheit or 40 degrees Celsius, as it'll start to lose its cleaning properties and efficacy. And when determining your cleaning cycle, I typically start with five minutes, and you can kind of go above, depending on how dirty your object is. And in this video, we're gonna go over how to ultrasonic clean Game Boy shells in addition to PCB. Be sure to watch to the end. All right, without further delay, let's get started. Let's go! Here we are pouring in the cleaning solution in distilled water. Again, filling it up 75% of the way full so it's able to operate. Got some test samples here today. Tried to choose some that are pretty dirty and dusty. And think about these Game Boy shells, they have a lot of crevices and deep pockets where it's hard to get like a toothbrush if you're trying to scrub. And here we go, moment of truth. If you've never heard of an ultrasonic cleaner before. Ah yeah, music to your ears. Let's go ahead and prep for the landing of these shells. A little dab dab to remove the excess cleaning solution. Now we're gonna use a towel to quickly dry off the surface of the shells here. You may have to use a toothbrush to clean off any remaining debris or any goopy stuff. And dang, they're looking real good, real clean, awesome. The only thing that doesn't get off is that screen lens adhesive that's super rock hard. You're still gonna have to take that off with a flathead screwdriver. All right, we got our shells looking good. Move on to the next thing. Now that we've finished Game Boy shells, we're gonna talk about cleaning PCBs in your ultrasonic cleaner. You know, when I first heard about this, I thought it was a little bit weird because you're submerging this electronic component PCB into this water solution. And I always thought that was like, no, no, it was a bad make. And in the second part, we're gonna talk about cleaning your PCBs in an ultrasonic cleaner the correct Cleaning way. your PCBs with an ultrasonic cleaner can be an effective method of removing dirt, dust, debris, 
flux, corrosion, and other sorts of foreign materials, where it simply involves dunking your PCB in the ultrasonic cleaner and running a cycle for about eight minutes. And when preparing the ultrasonic cleaner bath, we're gonna go ahead and look at the back label of our cleaning detergent to determine the cycle parameters. So first off, for preventative measures, it says to wear goggles and protective gloves at all times when using this cleaner. And when determining the dilution ratio, it says to use about 10% or one parts cleaning solution and 10 parts distilled water. The typical cleaning temperature should be at 55 degrees Celsius, where a typical cycle can range anywhere from 3 to 15 minutes. So today we're going to choose 8 minutes. Go ahead and disassemble your Game Boy and get the PCB in its raw form. And be careful not to include any batteries or speakers when cleaning your PCB. So the key to this cleaning method is to quickly dry your PCB after the cleaning's taken place. And there's a couple ways to do this. I'm gonna recommend to submerge your PCB into an IPA bath after the cleaning's taken place. And this will remove any water or residue from the cleaning solution so that you can ensure that there's a clean surface after everything's dried out. What I like to do with the PCBs after the IPA bath is place them on a little towel and blow a fan on them overnight to ensure that they're dried all the way. To accelerate the drying process, you can use compressed air, a hair dryer, or any other means of blowing heat onto the PCB to ensure there's a dry surface. You wanna make sure that your PCB is completely dry before turning it on. Now let's get dunking! So I rinsed and dried this out because we just used Simple Green before, so I wanted to clean it before we added a different sort of cleaner in it. We're putting our distilled water and our PCB cleaning detergent inside, again filling it to a level of 75%. Got our IPA bath ready. We're operating at 55 degrees Celsius for about 8 minutes. And make sure you have your IPA bath with your drying towels and ready to go when the parts are ready to come out. This is a little barbecue trick that I learned. I put some cotton gloves over my nitrile gloves to protect my hands against the heat as 55 degrees Celsius is a little hot on my hand. Place the PCBs in the bath carefully and let's start the cycle. Now after those eight minutes are up, go ahead, gently brush them with a toothbrush. There's a little bit of gunk that comes off. I don't know if that's from the corrosion or something, but go ahead and brush it off, no big deal. Put it into the IPA bath, shake it off, and then place it on the drying towel and they come out looking so fresh. And so a lot of these PCB boards are from Game Boy DMGs where they're really old. A lot of them had quite a bit of corrosion on them. And so this one, you can see a lot of the solder mask was actually removed. I'm not sure if it's salvageable, but we're gonna go ahead and try in some of my repair videos I'm planning on doing in the future. That's it guys, we cleaned some shells, we cleaned our PCBs. I hope you guys found this video useful. I wanna give a shout out to all the bros on the Game Boy Discord, where they're always super helpful to answer anybody's questions. So I invite you guys to come join the Discord, which I'll link in the description below, and join in on the fun. I also have a couple coupon codes from some affiliate partners that I've gained on the way that you can check out. and It'll support me in addition to providing you a discount on any of these retro modding products. Thanks so much for watching guys. I'm excited. Uh, I'm putting a little bit more effort into these videos and I want to provide a source of information from a lot of these questions that people struggle with when they get into the modding community. So please, if you have any questions, join the Game Boy Discord or leave a question in the comments below. And if you have anything else you want me to research, and learn about, please also leave those in the comments below and I can take a look. And always, game on gamers, and we'll catch you next time. Talk to you later.